Today we're going to take a quick look at an obscure bit of Star Wars technology, the Chiss Maser. Some of you, especially those who came over to the channel from Throne's Revenge, may be a bit more familiar with this, but a few times in the last couple of weeks I've spoken to people who haven't heard of them at all, so I thought it could be a fun topic to cover quickly. If you've ever seen a Star Wars movie, you're probably familiar with lasers and turbo lasers. A Maser is a variant on that, which was developed by the Chiss Ascendancy. A lot of the principles are the same, but there are some key differences. Where laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, the masers switch out light for microwaves. The exact mechanics on how lasers work in Star Wars have never been fully nailed down. However, the most likely explanation, and most common one, is that the actual light part is the kind of energy used to ignite gases, which become the actual bolt you see. In the case of masers, this would simply change the light to microwaves. Much like lasers, masers can come in various forms. There were personal maser weapons which acted as chiss variations of blasters called charics, and they could scale all the way up to larger ship-based maser cannons in the chiss version of a turbo laser called a mega maser. Usually, charic and maser shots were noted as being blue. However, presumably, much like how lasers can be a wide array of colors in Star Wars, masers could probably take alternate colors as well. Aside from how the beam is created, there are two main differences in their effect. The first was imparted kinetic energy. While Jedi could easily deflect blaster bolts, though turbo laser explosions would knock them back, in the Dark Nest trilogy, bolts from Charix were able to knock or nearly knock lightsabers out from the grasp of powerful Jedi Knights such as Jaina Solo, Zek, and Lobaka. They were also unable to be reflected in the same way that blasters could be. The second key difference is that they are usually noted as leaving severe burns, and the way these are referenced implies that this is far more severe than a blaster burn from weapons of comparable power. Vos Park, a former Imperial turned leader of Thrawn's Empire of the Hand, which would make him highly familiar with both Chiss and Imperial weaponry, mentions them as causing severe burns in Vision of the Future. In Survivor's Quest, Mary Jade describes Chark rifles as being a heat gun specifically. I've also been asked a few times whether Mazers or Turbo Lasers were more powerful. This is a difficult question to answer because you can impart similar power to each one, and much like a Turbo Laser versus an Ion Cannon, they're going to be doing different things even if some of the fundamental things they're trying to accomplish are the same. So really, it all depends on how much energy is imparted in each one. You can have a turbo laser that's more or less powerful than a maser, and vice versa. That's going to do it for our quick overview on Chiss Masers, though. I'd like to ideally mix in one or two of these shorter videos during the week between the longer form videos on Saturdays. So if you have any suggestions for topics, please leave them in the comments. As cliche as it is, if you've enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like or subscribing for more content, since that's the biggest thing which helps the videos get out there in the world more. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.